Good. Good after good morning still. Um, Madeline was located in the 4100 block of Clover Street. Uh, she was located by a uh, citizen driving down the road who was actually coming to assist us with the search. Um, she saw Madeline uh, walking in a field. Um, she was in uh, fairly good health, uh, suffering from hypothermia, but uh, conscious and, and other than the, the uh, suffering from the ailments outside, uh, she's doing well. She's being uh, transported to an area hospital. Um, she was just basically walking throughout the night and uh, there's no uh, indications of any foul play or anything. She was just, uh, you know, trying to get out and uh, go for a walk. Um, the, uh, I'd like to thank all the first responders that assisted with us uh, today, uh, including um, the Office of Emergency Management, uh, the Monroe County Fire, Fire Bureau, and their special operations. Uh, we pretty much, uh, I'll never be able to name all the fire departments that were here but we pretty much had every fire department from Monroe County uh, working with uh, the Sheriff's Department and the Chief from Honeyway Falls. Uh, we also had the State Police, uh, the New York State DEC, um, Honeyway Falls Ambulance, obviously the Honeyway Falls Fire Department, and um, another big help was uh, Wegmans who provided uh, food and drinks for all the first responders involved uh, in the search. Chief, do you have anything that I missed? Or you no, I would just like to also thank the community on their efforts. I know there's a large amount of uh, civilians that met down in the village that was doing a extensive search over areas that we may have gone over. So that way we could refine our search even though she wasn't there. Uh, the community did a great job of pulling together and working with uh, the fire department and LEOs in order to find this lady. So thank you to the community also. So it's really important to get out there, huh? I mean, because the weather was so bad, it could have been, could have been really bad. Yes, uh, you know, the problem we had at first is obviously the timing. Uh, you know, at night it's difficult. In uh, most of these cases, usually it's a citizen driving by once the light comes out because it's easy to spot people. Why is it you haul out so, so quickly? Uh, basically because of weather. I, we were joking. I was joking earlier when I did the first news briefing. I had this clothing on and I was shivering. So that was, you know, our biggest fear is that, um, you know, the elements out there. When it's like this, every minute counts. So. Absolutely. When you found her, did she still not have shoes on or a coat? Uh, the best of my knowledge, yes. Were did you she... able to talk with her? Was she able to say anything? I mean, did she seem like she was a okay? Uh, I didn't speak with her. Uh, they did speak with her. I don't have the specifics, but yeah, other than just, you know, being out in the elements for so long, she should be fine. Was, is her medical condition part of the reason why this search was such an urgent and eventually an expansive effort? Uh, no, I think it's really just the timing of everything, you know, the late at night, um, not expected to leave, not being prepared to be in the outside elements. And did you say she flagged down the driver? The driver spotted her. It was one of the volunteers that was going to be reporting to assist with the search. And she knew immediately who it was? Uh, pretty much, yes. How far would you estimate that this is where, uh, from where she lived and where she came from? I think we uh, pretty much pinned it down to 3.1 miles. Was it mostly the woods that she was walking through? Or? I don't know. I mean, I would guess that she was in the woods at some point, you know, uh, maybe either going in and out of the woods uh, because nobody spotted her until then. I mean, three. I doubt, I would hope that she just didn't walk three miles down Clover Street. I mean, so many people were coming down that road, including, you know, fire department, police, and everybody else, so. Do we have a better understanding as to why she took this walk? Uh, I just think she was having family issues, you know, and probably just wanted to cool off. I mean, I don't know specifics because we haven't had that conversation with her. But, you know, it was just a family issue at the home, um, and she was just going to cool off. Have you guys been searching that far down, or that area? That is a, a quite a ways down there. Uh, right. These kind of stories, they, they don't always have happy endings, as you know. What's this mean for you and your guys who working tirelessly all night long in the community? 
Uh, well, it's a great feeling to, you know, find her and knowing that she's um, okay. And, I mean, um, I'm sure the Chief would say the same thing. Everybody worked very well hand-in-hand. Hand. Um, we had a lot of resources here quickly, as you can see. So um, I think it went very well. Any, like, dehydration concerns with her? Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. We haven't, I mean, you know, I'm sure I can, the Chief with probably this, knows With this stuff, type of weather, with what she was wearing, uh, dehydration is a big concern. There's a lot of people that get more dehydrated during the winter time than they do the summertime um, because it is a drier air during the, the winter when, you know, when there's no snow on the ground. So yes, dehydration is a concern. And uh, did, did her family go to meet her at the hospital where she's going? Or... Yep, the family knows uh, and they're on their way to the hospital. Thank you. I'm sorry. D-E-L-E-L-L-A. And your time is up? Captain with the Monroe County Sheriff's Office.